can you tell people about the man, not the politician, but who you are as a man? Well, you know, uh, I come from a diverse background. Right? My mother uh, was from Kansas, a white woman from Kansas. My father was from Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, they met at the University of Hawaii, mm -hmm. uh, which is where I spent a lot of my youth. And, and then I lived in Southeast Asia for some, uh, some time. And I've got a half-sister who's half Indonesian. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, so I've got family all from around the world. And, and that, I think, uh, is, is a, a big part of me because there are pieces of me, including Dick Cheney, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, right. In, right. in my, in right. my family tree. And, uh, and hopefully that's one of the talents I bring to politics is getting people to recognize themselves in each other mm -hmm. and, and work together. Does that, do you even pay attention to the pressure that, that what I just said is if you, you would be the first African-American president? I mean, do you think about that or is yeah. that not an issue? You know, uh, just being the president, that's, that's uh, pressure enough. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. so, you know, I, I spend most of my time just thinking about um, how can I communicate a message of change? Mm -hmm. Because I think, you know, people are really frustrated with the gridlock and the pettiness of politics, and you know, part of the reason why you, you may not pay attention to politics a lot is sometimes it's depressing because it doesn't seem like we get a lot of stuff done. Right. And right. so, you know, what I'm trying to do is during this campaign to um, figure out how can we bring people together uh, around issues like healthcare, and global warming, and uh, giving a better education for our kids, mm -hmm. and how can we overcome some of the special interests and the lobbyists that mm -hmm. tend to dominate our politics. Now, speaking of that, you've been married for 15 years, 15 is that years, right? I am. And and you seem like a wonderful romantic couple. I'm a very romantic guy. You what's yes. the most romantic thing you've ever done? Um with her. Well, <laughs> not someone else, you know. <laughs> now, I I will, I will tell you Mich uh, the way I met Michelle. Uh, she's younger than me, but she had gone straight through school and through law school, and I had, um, I had worked before I went to law school. So the way I met was she was a first year associate at a law firm, and I was a summer associate. So she was my advisor. And so she would not date me because she took this position very seriously. Uh, and I kept on begging and pleading, which is usually how you get dates. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but finally, um, uh, after a firm picnic, I offered to buy her ice cream. And we went to Baskin Robbins and we sat out on the curb and uh, ate ice cream cones. And then I kissed her and that's when I, I figured, I, you know, that's when I sealed the deal. I, I thought, yeah. yeah. So the, uh, I, I think that moment buying her ice cream was probably, uh, that as, did it. That, that was it. All right. The last time you were here, you were running for president. And now uh, you're leaving. Um, I feel like I have something to do with both. Um, <laughs> but you, I, this is an obvious question, but what, how do you feel now compared to when you were here before? Older. Yes, I knew you would say that. <laughs> Tired? You know, I, the interesting thing is actually I feel really energetic. I, um, the first time I came, you know, there was a lot of, possibilities out there, but also uncertainty. And you know, you're young, you're uh, eager to get started, but you don't necessarily know what you don't know. Uh, and now, after having served for seven years and having gotten a lot done and seen the progress that we've made and uh, seen the incredible resilience of the American people and fighting back from recession and war, in some ways, the fear drops away. You, you feel confident that uh, America is going to do well. Uh, you know the job better. Uh, you're more relaxed, and uh, but just as enthusiastic as I was the first day I started. What do you and Michelle disagree on? <laughs> well, like, what do you fight about? You know, a, 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 after uh, about 15 years, I finally figured out that uh, she's always right. <laughs> so. So then, surprisingly, we just stopped fighting then after that. Then there's no more fighting. <laughs> well, she's a cheater. You know that. When you talk about the push-ups, I'm, I'm not even gonna. I'm not gonna argue about it anymore. Yeah. But she's a cheater. Um, yeah. So, look, she, look how far down I went, you're and still, look how you're, you're still upset about that. I am so because she didn't go down all the way, and she claims she had longer arms, and so she's. Listen, it was very impressive that she kept going, but she didn't go down as far as me. Look at her. Okay. Look, look. 
She's going down pretty far. No, 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 not as far down as me. Look. I mean, those are good, you have good form. I have better form than her, and I, and I. You have good form. All right, listen, I. I cannot tell you I, or, or thank you enough for what you have done for the gay community. So thank you. Uh, well, you know, it was, uh, it's one of the things I'm proudest of uh, because my whole political career has been based on the idea that we constantly want to include people and not exclude them. How do we bring more and more people into opportunity and success and uh, feeling hopeful about their lives. And, uh, but I will say, we were, we were driving over here today, and I, I meant this, I, I said it to my staff, I said, uh, as, as much as we've done with laws and ending don't ask, don't tell, et cetera, changing hearts and minds, uh, I, I don't think anybody's been more influential than you on that. I really mean that. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And so, the, uh, you know, your courage and you're just really likable. And so, <laughs> so as soon as, you know, so, you know, you uh, being willing to claim who you were then suddenly empowers other people and then suddenly it's your brother, it's your uncle, it's your, uh, you know, best friend, it's your coworkers. And, and, and then uh, attitudes, shift and the laws followed but it started uh with folks like you i'm so well, proud of you that uh well thank you yeah that's uh that's true. Really sweet. Thank that's you. True. um i'm not really gay i uh <laughs> I'm but just, you on tv i know you play I one just and thought it, was great. it would work and um I've had to stick with it because people will respond and yeah. go. Sort of like um, the dancing thing. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you just gotta kinda keep on going. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, uh, all right, so let's get back to you. Um, so, uh, this is, M Malia is going off to college, and uh, that's gotta be. That's hard. Yes. Yeah. That's gotta I, be. It, it, look, as Michelle reminds me, our job is to prepare them not to need us. And both my daughters are wonderful people, and Malia is more than ready to leave, but I'm not ready for her to leave. And yeah, I was asked if uh, I would speak at her graduation, I said, absolutely not, <laughs> because I'm gonna be sitting there with dark glasses, <laughs> sobbing. Um, yeah, she's one of my best friends, and it's, it's gonna be hard for, uh, for me not to have her around all the time. Uh, but she's ready to go, it, you know, you, you can tell when they're, she's just a really smart, capable, Person and she's she's uh, ready to make her own way and they're wow. and they're wonderful they're, they're wonderful girls and I um, Michelle gets all the credit maybe an assist from my mother-in-law but they really are just solid kids they you know they don't have an attitude they're courteous and kind to everybody um, yeah they work hard they don't feel like they're entitled to anything. Uh, well, they have great parents. Yeah. Uh, you, both you and Michelle are, are really, really amazing. Michelle is such a strong, wonderful role model yeah. for all women. And, I, and, you know, she has been a great first lady. I, she I agree. That I agree with. <laughs> that. So I heard that you carry a charm or something in your Yeah, I, I, on I, I your have person. a bunch of charms People that I put in my things. pocket. Yeah, they give me things on the... when I, This dates back to the campaign trail. They'd hand you stuff uh, and... Uh, I started getting this big collection of little charms, crosses or lucky coins or... And you um, keep a different one in... Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll just put a bunch uh, in my pocket. I have something to give you, you then. You do? Okay, mm -hmm. what do you got? Let's see. It's a, it's a charm, and it's my picture and your picture. Oh, <laughs> that is... Look at that. Yeah. I will treasure okay. this. This is so sweet. Yep, so that's for you Thank to keep you. at all times. I will. All right. Okay. And then I have a surprise for you, because it's do. Valentine's Day, right? Yeah. So we have a surprise for you. Take a look. Surprise! <laughs> hi, honey, and hi, Barack. <laughs> I just wanted to wish you a happy Valentine's Day. 
It's our last one that will spin in the White House. And in honor of that, I wrote you a little Valentine's Day poem that I wanted to share. <clears throat> Roses are red, violets are blue, you are the president, and I am your boo. <laughs> I, I wrote that while I was doing 100 push-ups this morning. You know, it gets the creative juices flowing. You should try it, Ellen. <laughs> No, really. Uh, you're the only person I'd share my husband with on Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to you and Portia, and happy Valentine's Day to everyone. And Barack, I know there's a C's candy out there, so bring me something chocolatey back. You know what you need to do. Love to you both. Bye-bye. That's so sweet. That's so sweet. That was very sweet.